Hey, folks, this is Juan Rochebo, president of the Florida Real Estate Investor Association, uh, bringing you this week's edition of The Fan, the Florida Action News. And, uh, yeah, I've had to work out a little bit extra hard, ate a little bit too much, still eating leftovers after all this time. You think we had uh, feeding the cavalry. But anyway, great time we had during the holidays, and thanks for all of you who showed up for the open house. We had a great time seeing you all. Uh, and those of you who blessed us, thank you so much for the gifts. That was awesome. Um, now we're uh, getting ready, full-blown into the holiday season, so a few things here to talk about, so let's go ahead and talk about this uh, week's headlines. All right, uh, foreclosure talks moving forward. 412 banks shut down, shadow inventory shrinking, 9,000 property owners untaxed. That's right. All right, let's see what's going on here from Wall, from the Wall Street Journal. Foreclosure talks moving forward. Now, you know we've been seeing this, the uh, 50 states attorneys generals and the, um, the bank representatives from Citibank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all these guys trying to come up with the plan to say, listen, I know we were bad people, we need our hands slapped, uh, but they're trying to negotiate that. It looks like they're getting away, they're getting somewhere. Um, they're working on a broad settlement you know, of most state and federal foreclosure practices, uh, investigations that could move forward without the participation of California. Now, the banks have proposed a deal excluding California that would carry a value of about $18.5 billion, though the final outcome still remains uncertain. Now, negotiators are continuing to make a push to persuade California to join a settlement value at $25 billion. So, it looks like if California came in, it'd uh, bring in an extra $7 billion, right? Um, now, even though they can still get the deal done without California, all right, but now the dollar value would include the value of principal write-downs, interest rate reductions, and other benefits to homeowners, as well as cash penalties. <clears throat> now, the California Attorney General, she's focused on securing the maximum relief for California homeowners, which is why she's still set on not being a part of it. Uh, the administration officials have viewed the foreclosure settlement as a chance as the Obama administration, as a chance to break the foreclosure logjam, increase the number of reductions in loan principal, and provide other assistance to homeowners. Banks, meanwhile, would like to reassure investors and put questions related to foreclosure practices behind them. I'm sure they would. Uh, any deal would require banks to use a portion of the penalties of modified mortgages by writing down loan balances, among other actions. In exchange, banks would be released from legal claims tied to servicing delinquent mortgages as well as certain mortgage origination practices. All right, now, government officials still would be able to move forward with other legal claims, including those stemming from the packaging of loans into securities. Uh, now, the participation of California isn't the only item still on the negotiating table. The two sides still must agree on the choice of a monitor. Who's going to oversee this whole thing, you know? Um, ensuring that the banks comply with the settlement and the people familiar, you know, they just need to figure that out. So um, that's where they're at. Uh, is it going to come down to something before the year's end? I don't know. Um, I, there's still that whole liability issue. I think the banks are, are trying to, to weasel their way out of the whole thing. And so um, will it happen? I don't know. Uh, anyway, let's go on to other news here. DSnews.com uh, here reporting 412 bank sh shut down. That's right. To date, from the start of 2008, 412 FDIC-insured lenders have been shut down. Now, the FDIC states that no institution's balance sheets have been fully insulated from the downturn. That means everybody that they've insured has been hit one way or another. All right. Those who have survived appear to be finding their way out of the storm. All right, so that means, you know, if they've gotten this far, it looks like they might make it. Now, I know here in Florida we have a lot of banks that are on the hot list, and we're going to talk about that here real quick. Um, the number of institutions on the FDIC's problem list has dropped from 865 to 844. Uh, so, yeah, that's a, a thing that they're trying to do something. Yeah, the banks have shown an increase in earnings for nine consecutive quarters, which is good news to them. Uh, although banks have come a long way, Martin Grunberg, he's the acting chief of the FDIC, he says ongoing distress in real estate markets as well as slow growth in jobs and incomes as con are uh, continuing to pose risks to credit quality. Uh, but uh, here they are saying they're seeing an increase in loans. Loans to commercial and industrial borrowers uh, have increased by $44.8 billion. And residential mortgage loans balances have risen by $23.7 billion. So somebody's out there is lending, so it's just a matter of finding them. 
All right, then the uh, notorious shadow inventory shrinking. That's right. This is according to S&P Standard & Poor's. They released its third quarter shadow inventory update. Now, this shows both the volume of distressed assets and the amount of time it would take to liquidate these prop properties, and they're saying that it's contracting. All right, so uh, they're saying that the volume of distressed residential mortgage included in its shadow inventory estimate remained extremely high at $384 billion in the third quarter, but it has declined in each quarter since mid-2010. S&P's third quarter valuation is down from $405 billion at the end of the previous quarter. Now, the agency now estimates that it will take 45 months to work through the national shadow inventory. This assessment is seven months below S&P's peak estimate of 52 months in March 2011. But it's three months longer than the agency agencies estimate a year ago, so uh, still a little ways to go. But I guess that's some improvement in the uh, in the market. All right, now from the Palm Beach Post: nine thousand property owners untaxed. How about that? Who here would not want to pay their real estate taxes? Well, uh, due to a computer glitch, about nine thousand Palm Beach County property owners did not receive their annual tax bills. Uh, it seems like this is a consistent problem year after year, but uh, this time I guess 9,000 people didn't receive it. Uh, the missing bill represents about 1.3% of all t offices tax bills. Uh, the glitch was recently discovered during a recent audit of the 705,000 tax bills that should have been mailed out. Uh, these owners will receive the 4% discount received if they pay, you know, the, the discount we get uh, if we pay by November 30th. Now they'll get it in December. Uh, so that way they won't be affected. But mainly the people that were affected were those that pay their ta taxes quarterly. Uh, it seems like they were the majority of the uh, 9,000 people. So anyway, that's, um, <clears throat> that's that. So they still have to pay taxes, unfortunately. All right. Well, Miami Dolphins did not win this week. Tough loss. Uh, it was a close game. Um, sh just ouch. So, well... How about next week, right? You know, it was, I thought I was going to have a Thanksgiving feast and then enjoy the game and uh, kind of rough to watch. But anyway, they tried. They did their best against the Cowboys. They should have beat them, but things just didn't turn their way. So anyway, um, that's, uh, that's the Dolphins for you. So can we still make it to the AFC champ East Championship? Maybe. We need a lot of miracles happening on the for the other teams because we're still a few games behind and we need for these guys to lose a lot. So... I uh, don't know if that will happen. But anyway, things can happen. All right, uh, let's see what's going on at the Florida Rio. We've got our Real Estate Opportunities webinar every Tuesday at 1245, so don't be, sh be sure and don't miss that. Uh, and then we have our Cash Flow game coming up Friday, December 2nd at 7 p.m. So look forward to seeing you guys out there. We want to dethrone Mr. Mike Poole, get him out of there. Uh, and then on December 9th, we have Joy to the World. That's right, at Victory Worship Center. That's our church. We'd love to have you come out there and sing some Christmas carols. I mean, it's nice and cool. We'll even have some hot chocolate for you. All right, and then the Elite Conference call has been moved uh, from uh, to December 13th. All right, so mark your calendars. Uh, due to a little conflict in our schedule, we had to move that over. So anyway, that's what the date that is going to be. All right, and then God's property is on the morning of December 15th, so I'll have two, back to, two mornings that week that are early. And then our Christmas party on December 15th, the evening, at um, Phillips Point Club. Now remember, it is black tie optional, so you can uh, dress up for this. And don't forget to bring your unwrapped toy for Urban Youth Impact, all right, as we every year give them toys to help the parents that really would like to have some, something to give to their kids for Christmas, and this is a great way that Urban Youth Impact does this for them. We supply toys to their store, and it gives the parents an opportunity to get something for the kids, so great way to um, change a life and help a life during the holiday season, so don't forget to bring them, all right? Look forward to seeing you guys there. All right, well, that's the news. That is the news for this week. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at any one of our upcoming events. Don't forget to follow us on our social media at Facebook.com, YouTube.com, and Twitter.com, all forward slash Florida Ria. This is Juan Rochepo signing off. God bless. It's See ya. The kingdom of God is within me. Some joy.